Hi guys and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. Tucked away in this big box hides a brand new product from AMD, or to be more precise from Sapphire, and as the new graphics card from the just released and also new AMD R9 300 series of GPUs, this one in particular being the Sapphire's R9 390 Nitro model. Right away you can notice that Sapphire did a complete redesign of the product box for this new generation of GPUs and even rebranded the series name into Nitro. The box now has some new details on it, one in particular being this window through which you can see the graphics card. The cooler design is still named the same and in this case we have the Tri-X one, as you can see it from the features overview on the bottom and down there you can also notice that this model has 8GB of GDDR5 video memory, which is actually an upgrade for the R9 390 and R9 390X models in comparison to the previous previous generation. On the bottom of the box you will see some information about the system requirements and specifications of the card and going around it we have some talk about the Nitro series and Nitro features of the cooler with a picture of it and the graphics card. In the top right corner you can see what seems to be a new logo which represents the Nitro brand and right next to it we have a new add-on called Sapphire's Performance Index Rating System which indicates how well will this card perform so you can estimate if a model will suit your needs performance wise. Opening up the box, beside the usual user manuals and optical disk with drivers and software, you will get a 1.8 meter long HDMI cable and that's it for the bundle. And here we have the graphics card itself. The outer shell of the graphics card, or to be more precise of the Tri-X cooler, has changed a bit in comparison to the last generation. It's more subtle and clean looking with metal accents and sapphire sign, and we actually like it more than the version before it. The actual cooling components behind the top plastic parts seem to be the same. We have three big heat pipes coming off from the GPU and going to the aluminium parts and fins of the cooler, which stretches all over the PCB and even over it, as you can see it hanging here on the back. On top of that we have three 85mm fans, which are in charge of bringing in the cold air. Unfortunately Sapphire missed out an opportunity to put a backplate on the card and that's probably reserved for their more premium products like the Vapor X series. Going around the card you'll find some other usual stuff like UEFI switch and two PCI Express 8 pin power connectors for fulfilling the power specifications of the card. As for video output, Sapphire ditched one DVI-D, although the reference design has two of them. The rest of them consist out of three display ports and one HDMI. Before we take a look at the performance of the card, we would like to inform you that the R9 390 is actually not based on a new GPU architecture, but rather a rebrand of its predecessor. As we said, the R9 390 and R9 390X will come with 8GB of video memory by default, instead of 4GB. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same specification-wise, same amount of shaders, texture units, ROPs, memory bus width, and so on. The only thing you can expect to be different are GPU and memory clocks, depending on the vendors. Running through some basic benchmarking software right away you can see that the performance of this R9390 model is right in the alley of its predecessor. It's a bit better performing thanks to its higher clock speeds on account of that Sapphire did the factory overclocking on it, but other than that you can expect pretty much the same performance. As for the cooling performance, it seems that Sapphire did a rehaul of the firmware and BIOS in regards to the fan control and now the car can work completely passive under idle. If it gets a bit warmer, above 47 degrees Celsius, the fans gradually turn on one by one depending on how hot the car gets. From our experience, card utilizes from 1 to 0 working fan in idle, which is in practice inaudible. Under load it can get up to pretty low 70 degrees Celsius thanks to the Sapphire's Tri-X cooler, while all three fans in that case produce a pretty decent but bearable noise. Thank you guys once again for checking out our unboxing and review of the Sapphire's R9 390 Nitro graphics card. Feel free to give us a thumbs up if you like this video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the product and of course if you would like to see more content like this you can subscribe to our Tactic YouTube channel or you can check out our other videos from before.